chance to meet Kevin Smith, Silent Bob, and all those terrible Jane Silent Bob type pictures, man. You're listening to Drop the Mic, the only podcast that I listen to that I'm not a part of. Every podcast I listen to, I usually talk on it, but not fucking Drop the Mic. That's where I'm like, let me hear what the boys have to say. And now we drop the mic. I'm Detective Lieutenant Elliot, and this is Trooper Wagner. We just want to ask a few questions. We understand the night of his demise, the family had gathered to celebrate your father's 85th birthday. How was it? Hello. The party? Pre my dad's death? Oh, it was great. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to request that you all stay until the investigation is completed. What? Can we ask why? Has something changed? No. No, it hasn't changed, or no, we can't ask. I'm gonna live till I die. You think one of his family walls, walls. killed? Is that what you're suggesting? Let it cry. I'm gonna take the you all love twisting the knife into one another. Up your ass. Oh, very nice. Matter of fact, eat shit. How's that? Eat shit. Eat shit. Eat shit. Smug smile. Definitely eat shit. Gonna fly. I'm taking chance. You know something. Spill it. I suspect. Foul play. And I have eliminated no suspects. <laughs> I'm gonna live, 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 until I... It's a twisted web. We are not finished untangling it, not yet. What is this? CSI KFC? <laughs> Welcome back to our humble San Diego podcast. This is Drop the Mic, and we're your host, Wesley Swanson and Ryan Jimenez. We will be taking it back to 2019 for a discussion of writer director Ryan Johnson's modern classic, you guessed it, Knives Out. But first, let's get warmed up, shall we? How's it going, Ryan? Welcome back. How's it going? Thank you for having me. It's going good. Just chilling on this Thursday night. And now for a special news report. So, man, uh, on the news front, what do you have for us this week? <clears throat> yeah, so um, in a recent interview, uh, Guy Ritchie has said that Will Smith will return as the genie in Aladdin 2. Uh, it's obviously going to be the sequel to the first one, which made a fucking shit ton of money, a billion dollars. Um, so I know a lot of people had, after all that whole Oscar shit, <clears throat> what was going to happen with all his, his movies and everything he was attached to the guy, Richie coming out and basically saying that, yeah, he's not going anywhere from that movie, which is kind of crazy being a Disney movie. Yeah. What, what are your personal thoughts on that? Do you agree? Um, I did. I agree. Like, I, I think he apologized. I think we've talked about this shit on the show already multiple times. Um, but I don't have a problem with it, dude. I, I actually enjoyed I think I'm one of the few that, I mean, it made a lot of money, but I know a lot of people had their their problems with it. Um, it was one of the few Disney live action movies that I enjoyed. And um, obviously Will Smith having big shoes to fill with, you know, taking over as a genie. I think he did a cool job. <clears throat> I, um, I enjoyed it. So yeah, dude, I don't mind it. What about you? Um, no, I, I don't mind. Like, I feel like, uh, Maybe I'm going to get in trouble for this, but sometimes we need to, like, as a culture, society, like, we need to forgive certain things, you know, of course, mm -hmm. within reason. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's there's been an, an, a lot of time where he's been idle, and uh, I don't think we should, like, strip somebody's career away from them based on a mistake, no matter, like... Especially within with what it was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Um, so, yeah. Like, I don't have a problem with it. I did watch Aladdin. I didn't go see it in the theaters. I thought it was decent. Uh, of course, I like Guy Ritchie as a filmmaker. And mm-hmm. um, I'm glad that they didn't do something cheesy, like try to recast him. Uh, yeah. Because it just ruins the continuity, you know? Yeah, it does. <clears throat> um, this is going to make some people pissed off, but... In some uh, box office news, um, James Cameron, who I despise, uh, <laughs> has said that his new Avatar sequel needs to break box office records in order to recoup its budget. Essentially, saying it needs to make about two billion dollars. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> he wow. Had to. Yeah. Oh um, man. <laughs> I know they're already. It's already tracking. Like with like pre-sales and everything to kind of like do like i think i saw a number was like 175 for the weekend um but yeah dude it's it's that's insane (laughs) so basically it just has to become the great the the biggest box office uh event of all time i mean uh like i like i like james cameron like his 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 older work of course i think Mm -hmm. everybody does even you um and I'm not a fan of Avatar. I never watched the first one in its entirety, and everybody's always shocked by that. But I do think that it, it, it's within the realm of possibility that it will, it could pull that off. You know, <clears throat> especially with the hype and everything that seems to be uh, surrounding it. But to have went th- <laughs> that with that kind of sky high budget with a film. That's a, essentially a sequel to a movie that's, you know, been out for more than a decade now mm. is insane. Um, <clears throat> so I just hope for his sake <laughs> that it that it works out, I guess. I mean, I, I think we're kind of like in the I know people that, you know, like us that didn't really care for the first one. Um so there, there are people that you know just don't care for it, but I know it's gonna make its money, dude. It's gonna, it's, it, you know, people are gonna fucking eat that shit up. But um, did you know that I didn't know this? The re- one of the reasons why it took so long to make is because they essentially filmed this and the third one and half of the fourth one all together. No, I didn't know that either. Yeah, I saw an interview with them saying that. It's like Jesus, fuck, dude, like. But we'll see. Like I said, it's going to make a lot of money. Um, I don't know, man. James Cameron is just that, that, that type of person that just... The, uh, Terminator's cool. Second one's cool. But, I mean, I know he did Aliens, but... Don't, don't forget know. Don't forget The Abyss. The Abyss is great. The Abyss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, he kind of took what Ridley Scott gave him and, and did Aliens. I know he wrote it and directed it, but I don't know. Whatever. Moving on. (laughs) 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 Couple video game little bits I got. So the director of Days Gone, the uh, PlayStation exclusive that came out a couple years ago, has uh, gone to Twitter to give his three reasons why it never got a sequel. I know I think I reported on something like this a couple of months back, but this is him directly speaking, um, saying that it had tech issues like bugs, streaming, and frame rate. It had reviewers who couldn't be bothered to actually play the game. And the best reason he gave is it had woke reviewers who couldn't handle a gruff white biker looking at his date's ass. <laughs> and this is for Days Gone? <laughs> this is for Days Gone, yeah. <laughs> like, not like... I would put it like 95, 96% of the video games that come out have a white main character. So I don't know where he's coming from. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I played that game and it really, uh, I got upset because it was the mechanics were kind of hard and tricky at first, but then mm-hmm. I stuck with it and I didn't give up and, and, and I fucking finished the whole thing somehow. It was really hard, <clears> but it's also very, very engaging. And I thought it was, uh, 
very well done despite a lot of uh, critical panning of yeah it. no i loved it i loved it it just kind of like it's been a couple it's been how many years four or five years already like god uh, and now you're blaming it on woke culture like come on dude yeah I don't, I don't know what <laughs> i don't know where that is coming from <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I know the news everyone has has heard in that last couple couple days, but uh, today James Gunn took to Twitter to clarify some of the rumor, rumors involving the DC Cinematic Universe. He tweeted, "Some of it's true, some of it's half true, some of it's not true, um, and some of it we haven't decided yet whether it's true or not." Um, obviously, he's talking about um, Wonder Woman three being pulled from their their slate and kind of just scrapped all together. There's also rumors that they're getting rid of Henry Cavill Superman. I know he just kind of um, made an appearance in another movie. I don't want to fucking spoil it, but... Um, and apparently they're they're even going to think about getting rid of Jason Momoa's Aquaman and kind of recasting him. I've seen rumors um, to play Lobo. Um, and then he goes on to say... Uh, we know we're not going to make every single person happy every step of the way, but we can promise everything we do is done in the service of the DC characters. We know you cherish and we have cherished for our whole lives. So it's pretty crazy, dude. What do you think about all that? So what he's essentially saying is that maybe Wonder Woman is not dead. Yeah. So I think the from what I take from, I mean, I think he's, doing the right thing by by just kind of getting rid of everything right like dc needs a clean clean slate but what i don't think he's going to do is kind of get rid of wonder woman and and because you know it's such a big she's such a big character in the, the last couple movies other than the, the the last two movies you know other than the second one kind of kind of got critically slammed um i don't think they're going to get rid of her and i think that's what he's trying to say People just jump to speculation that he's going to get rid of everything. Yeah, I think Wonder Woman. Everyone can agree that Wonder Woman is kind of one of the the better things DC has done. Yeah, but yeah, it's kind of crazy and wild that uh, like The Rock put all that time and effort, like a decades worth of work, trying to get Black Adam out, and now James Gunn comes in and is probably going to get rid of all of that. <laughs> well, I mean, are people really in love? with that movie <laughs> i read something that like it's gonna it, they're they're gonna lose money really yeah like it's only made i say only but i think it's only made like 375 380 um but they spent it had a 200 million dollar budget and they spent a 100 million on marketing oh no so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> um what? so yeah 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 Oh Fucking no! Flying the rock into every goddamn country and state. Oh no! Um, the casual fans that I've talked to in person, uh, who have seen it, said that it's okay, but that they were confused. I don't know what that m really means, hmm. but they did. They just didn't understand where the character was coming from, or what he was related to, or they mm -hmm. were just um, they were they just said it was very kind of bizarre and they didn't know how to feel about it kind of indifferent and that's mm -hmm. multiple people telling me this and for the record again i haven't i haven't seen it so i can't really speak on it um but i don't know the rock overstaying is welcome i'll just say <laughs> um dear james gunn listen if you're listening to this right now please 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 just don't get rid of our, our robert pattinson's batman okay let Matt Reeves do whatever he wants to do on that side. Well, I mean, it's always uh, been like known that it's its own thing, right? So hopefully not. Yeah. Yeah. I hope not. Um, yeah. Crazy. Ghost of Shishima writer Liz Abel has joined the new Bioshock game as a narrative lead. I didn't even know they were making a new Bioshock game. So that's exciting being it's my favorite um video game of all time i'm super stoked to see what they have in store and she was a writer on ghost of tsushima and ghosts of tsushima so that's fucking awesome yes 
I love Ghost of Tsushima. That's one of my favorite modern games that I played. Fucking, that's all I did when it came out. I just sat down. I would go to work, come home, and I play for hours <laughs> until I couldn't play anymore. And I fucking loved every minute of it. Oh man, I'm. I think I'm like half. I haven't been it. I'm like halfway through. Um, did you ever play the black and white stuff? Did uh, you play it through black and white. And that's the only style, the only way I played it. I played it in its in, oh, nice. in its entirety in the black and white uh, format. Though. And look at you in some late breaking news. How crazy is it that fucking Jackie Chan announced Rush Hour Four? What the fuck? Yeah, right. That we were just talking about last week. Yeah, our last episode, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> it's my fault. It hasn't been released out, but we literally were talking about this. Uh, and this show has a funny way of making things <laughs> come to fruition somehow. And, you know, of course, I picked The Foreigner. I had no idea that Jackie Chan was going to go on record and say, Yo, guys, <laughs> don't worry. We're working on Rush Hour 4 right now. It's happening. It's happening. It's fucking wild. 68 <clears throat> years old now. How, how is... um? Is Chris Tucker in his... He, is he in his 50s? 51. Wow. So he's still young. Yeah. Hell yeah. Super excited for that. <clears throat> um, got a couple more. Uh, for all the, 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 the wrestling fans out there, um, PW Insider is reporting that former WWE superstar Sasha Banks will be at New Japan Pro Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom 17. If you're not familiar with New Japan, it's like Wrestle Kingdom is like their WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. They do it every year in uh, the Tokyo Dome. So that's pretty crazy, dude. She's, you know, she was probably up there with Becky Lynch and, you know, Bailey and Charlotte Flair as, you know, WWE's top woman talent. Um, and now she's going over there. It's kind of insane. Um, also, just a little fucking tidbit. If you have the chance to watch Wrestle Kingdom, fucking will osprey who wrestles in new japan pro wrestling go and google youtube his fucking videos of him wrestling insane fucking kid's gonna be he's he's super young too he's gonna be he's one of the champions of he's gonna be fucking for the next couple of decades one of the, the better wrestlers in the world but he's facing um kenny omega who kind of goes between AEW and um um, New Japan, so he, Kenny Omega is going to go back to New Japan and then fight him for that title. Um, that fucking that match is going to be insane. They fought. Um, Will Osprey fought when New Japan did their AEW like um, Forbidden Door, and that was the first time I had seen him. And Jesus fuck, dude, crazy, crazy, crazy shit. <clears throat> but yeah, go and watch some New Japan Pro Wrestling. YouTube that shit if you haven't insane stuff they do over there also i don't know if you know this but they like don't clap or like yell or anything or they don't they don't like cheer all they do is clap because of covid still so it's like completely silent other than clapping really yeah yeah <clears throat> um and in my last bit of news in some san diego sports news insane the Padres have signed former Red Sox shortstop Xander Bogarts to an 11-year, $280 million deal. Where the fuck are you guys getting this money from, Wes? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's a very, very exciting time to be a Padres fan. That's fucking awesome. <clears throat> Hopefully the contract works out for them. Hopefully it doesn't. It's not... A bust, but he's one of the best pure hitters in baseball, and it's kind of crazy they they have Tatis as a shortstop, but they're bringing Xander in. I'm pretty, pretty sure Tatis is probably going to play like center field or something like that. But it's crazy, dude. It's good, good, good for San Diego and those small market teams. There is no also. It's not a fucking small market team. It's you have small market. You have small fucking wallet owners. And it's nice to see San Diego has a, an owner that is willing to show his fans that he needs to win and they need to win in that city, needs a title. So congratulations, Wes. I am stuck with the the rats at the Coliseum. <laughs> they're gonna be they're gonna be playing shortstop for me. 
<laughs> Better see some results. That's all I'm gonna say. You know. I know. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for my news. What about what about you? Awesome. We had a definitely a few of those news pieces in common, but I still have three for you. So I'm going to start off with, um, as we previously reported on the show, HBO max will be going away soon with Warner brothers discovery unveiling the new app, uh, which is going to be called simply, um, max M A X. I don't know how I feel about this. Why not just leave it? Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Like just leave it. It doesn't doesn't need a reboot. You don't need to call it anything else. It's it's HBO Max. Yeah. So they're literally just dropping the HBO. I guess. Um, when does that roll out? Did they say? No, they didn't give a date. They just they just unveiled basically that the title, which is pretty, uh, how do you say, like underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> Max. It's just Max now, all right? Watch it. Watch it. Just have like the exact same app, the exact same color scheme, font, yeah. color, <laughs> yeah, everything. It's it just no HBO anymore. <laughs> oh man! And what I want to know is like, are they going to uh, like? Is everybody's sign-ins going to be deleted, and then we have to make a new account? Kind of how they did. Remember HBO Max Go? HBO Go? Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know, dude. That was fucking terrible too because they rolled out Max with HBO and HBO Go was still a thing, so it's like everyone was fucking confused as shit. Yep. Um what else? The new Christmas action hybrid film Violent Night, which stars David Harbour, has opened to twenty million, making back its budget already. But will the film's popularity last throughout the holiday season? Do you have thoughts on this film? I know I think you said you haven't seen it yet. No, I was gonna go see it, and I, we we didn't. We went to go see something else. But um, dude, that's fucking awesome. Uh, um, I fucking you know David Harbour is fucking awesome. Um, it's that's super badass that it made twenty million dollars. Um, I know. I think it. I think Black Panther beat it out by like ten, ten, fifty million dollars a still. But for that movie to make twenty million like opening weekend, yeah, it says a lot about the. It says a lot. What we've been talking about the last couple months it says a lot about that genre and, and what the people want is fucking stuff like that it's very yeah it's very much like they're they're like let's do this fucking exploitation ass john wick-esque balls to the wall crazy <laughs> shit with john Lugazamo. shout out to john who is the villain in the movie uh mm. I'm excited, man. I, you don't get m many movie events like this, so it's pretty cool to have. First of all, for it to have such a big budget, and for it to make its budget back so so easily, you know. Because now I think what, it has like a seventy plus Rotten Tomato score too. Oh, really? So it's yeah. certified fresh. That's awesome. Um, because, like I've always said, if if we don't go out to support these films like this. Uh, or that so many people love or in the genre, you know, they're, uh, they won't do them. So mm -hmm. it's awesome that people are, are enticed to go out and, and support very niche, niche, uh, stuff like this. It's, uh, it's crazy. So now everything is just fucking free money for them now. That's tight. Yep, everything, yeah, that the, it makes, um, and we're, you know, we're getting closer to Christmas, so I think people are going to be like, oh, wow, uh, let's go check this out. Uh, yeah. So it's exciting. <clears throat> uh, moving on, uh, before we close out and move into Rex, I just wanted to give out an RIP to the legendary referee and former judge Mills Lane, who passed away recently at the age of 85. I'll allow it! <laughs> it's so awesome that his, his career kind of got like a... Second win with Celebrity Deathmatch came out. Yes. Yes, of course. And that's where probably most people our age know him from. Like, they don't remember him as a, as, you know, as a ref. <clears throat> Did you ever watch his uh, his his public uh, court show at all? Or are you too young? Yeah. Yeah, no. I, 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 I watched fucking... When did that used to come on? During the day, like... But that was something that you would stay home if you got if you were sick or something. That was something you put on, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. 
That's why when I tripped out, when I saw a celebrity deathmatch for the first time, I was like, yo, I know this fucking guy. <laughs> and now it's time for the weekly recommendations. Yeah. Um, real quick, just want to shout out fucking again with the wrestling shit, AW, WWE. They're doing some wild shit. Fucking MJF has the, the world title in AW, and he's com- be- being a complete fucking menace, knocking out William Regal. <laughs> Um, and then WWE fucking Royal Rumbles next month, so they're going to be doing some wild shit. I'm sure there's going to be some wild con- contestants for the for the Rumble. I've been hearing fucking everything from fucking CM Punk coming back to The Rock being that number thirty, so he can he can have that title match with with Roman at WrestleMania. But yeah, dude, it's a good time for wrestling fans. Stop fighting amongst each other. Just fucking enjoy this that we get two different wrestling promotions on TV. Um, and then I finally saw, I finally picked up, we picked up the, um, Walmart exclusive slip cover of Pearl. Yes. Um, um, and dude, what, you know, what's gonna, you know, what's gonna be the, the shitty thing about this year is that just like, just like who's in Knives Out, Tony Collette should have been nominated for Hereditary. She should be nominated for fucking Pearl. Because that is, I don't know what's more scary, her performance or all that fucking blood and gore at, towards the end. Um, she's perfect, dude. She's, she's fucking awesome. Um, and, and Ty West is fucking brilliant. And just like you talked <clears throat> about a couple episodes ago, um, we can thank X having such a big... Um, you know, being such a big um, draw at the box office and making a lot of money, a decent amount of money for a small film for all these new slasher flicks coming out and kind of a revival of, of that that genre. Um, but yeah, dude, Mia Goth, fucking shit. Perfect. I want to say, dude, I think I like Pearl better than X. I, 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 loved, I loved X, but Pearl, dude, is just... And, and I, and I, it's funny cause I asked that I was very curious and I asked Emma after taking her to see Pearl in the, in the theater, I had, that was my second time seeing it. And I was like, I'm still torn as to what I like more. Um, uh, but hearing you say that and, and hearing Emma's feedback is she said, you know, I'd like Pearl more because it's literally Mia Goth is doing everything. She is yes. the film. And she just killed, like, it's more of an exercise in her acting chops, you know, Mm -hmm. as for, uh, you know, with X, um, there's a lot more going on and it's a more traditional kind of formula and, and, and Pearl is like, you, you don't know what the hell is happening (laughs) at any, it's kind (laughs) of, uh, I don't know, but yeah, I can respect that, uh, your opinion for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go fucking stream it right now or go buy it because it's fucking great. <clears throat> um, and then I watched a little film on HBO Max a couple nights ago called Don't Worry Darling, starring our favorite Florence Pugh, Harry Styles, and then directed by Olivia Wilde. Um, where do I begin, Wes? <laughs> <laughs> um it's cool like it, it's it's an okay movie um and i say that just uh, like because of florence i think without florence it would i wouldn't have liked it at all um but she fucking fucking again she acts her ass off again another um i think award worthy performance <clears throat> um and I, I don't know if you felt like this, but I felt like Harry Styles just kind of was just there. Like I didn't feel the same. The, the, feel the same I did about um, I don't about Florence Pugh's performance in that as I as I do his. It just kind of just lacking. Um, it felt like he was just there for a check or something else. Wink, wink. <laughs> um, yeah, did and. and the everything was just super predictable. Like I turned the Sandy, or I turned the Sandy like halfway through the film, and I was like, "This is spoiler." So if you don't want to know, 
turn off the episode and go go and watch it. Um, but halfway through, dude, I knew that it was in present day. Like I I called it and I had called the as soon as I see that I saw that the 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 plane simulation kind of glitch. I, that's when I knew there was some like something matrixy going on. But yeah, if you want to see Florence Pugh act her ass off, check it out. It's on HBO Max right now. But yeah, I gave it maybe like a six out of ten. <laughs> Oof. Um, yeah. Um, and I'm super easy to please. Uh, Harry Styles didn't bother me, but he anyone could have done. Yeah, that part, you know, like there was yeah. nothing. He didn't really bring um, much anything special, except for again, spoilers. It was fast forward this if you don't want to hear it. Here's your warning. Um, when we see him in the the real modern world, and he's all fucked up. Even though it's like for a few seconds, maybe a couple minutes, um, I felt like that was really good. Where he looks all dirty and fucking weird, and mm-hmm. like that was fine. But also, it was very fast. It was very subtle, you know. Yeah, it was. It's just when you're when you're up against fucking Florence Pugh, <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Scene stiller, but yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, my last, my last rec last night, we went to go see the menu starring, uh, Anya Taylor joy, Rob Fiennes, Nicholas Holt. Um, dude, it's fucking good. It's such a good fucking dark comedy. I was laughing my ass off and afraid at the same time. Um, definitely, definitely might have to slip it in my top 10 of the year. The menu. Um, it's it's good, dude. I I was super super surprised. It, it's it's different, um, and fucking <laughs> yeah, it, it's good, dude. I don't want to give anything away, but yeah, go check it out. It's still in theaters. Um, um, but yeah, go check out Don't Worry, Dar- uh, Don't Worry, Darling on HBO Max if you if you want to see Florence the Menu Pearl. Yeah, those are my recs. All right, I have just one, just one for you this week. Uh, I did what I said I was going to do last show and I went to watch, uh, I went to watch Bones and All. Very good. Uh, yeah. Very, very good. Uh, both of the, the leads were excellent. It's very, it's kind of art house, but it does mm. pack a punch with the, the gore and stuff. It's not too much. It's, it, it, it's still, in my opinion, it was still tasteful. Um, mm. if I could. Uh, how do you say um, r- relate it to some other material um, I would probably say it's a mixture of Flanagan's Doctor Sleep with elements of Catherine Bigelow's uh, Near Dark peppered in okay. <clears throat> um, it definitely does not because I've seen a lot of stuff out <clears throat> uh, a lot of comments and tweets and stuff about the film uh, glamorizing cannibalism I don't believe mm-hmm. I don't I don't believe that that was the intention behind the the, the film whatsoever. Um, and also to those people, I say like, are we not allowed to tell fictional stories anymore? Like, it's, I did not know people were th- saying that. That yeah, is insane. Yeah. Are we not allowed to fucking make up anything like, and tell <laughs> stories about anything now? With <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know, but I yes, I it is. It's two hours and ten minutes, um, but it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like draggy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I had a lot of fun with it. V- some very very tense stuff, and and there's like this this essence of of of, of punk rock and kind of alternative culture. And, you know, within drifters and, and com- camaraderie that way that I really mm-hmm. appreciated, um, about the, the film. So I would definitely go see it. I think it's going to be dropping, di- uh, on digital soon for people who don't want to, uh, maybe don't want to go check it out. I did have yeah. an experience. <laughs> we went to, what was it? Um, we ended up going to, I think a six forty five showing for it. 
And um, when I bought the tickets, there weren't a lot of seats taken. So I figured we were going to have the theater to ourselves. And it's going to be a great experience. But of course, the family comes in. They bring a baby. <laughs> you bring a baby into bones and all? Okay. Strike one. <laughs> Strike two, they're talking amongst themselves the entire time. Luckily, they were very far away from us, so it wasn't too distracting. Uh, and then when the film ended, they were all, yo, what the fuck? What the fuck was that? And and again, my question to you is, did you guys just come to the movie and you had no idea what was playing and you just picked this movie because you were like, yo, yo, Timothy, you know, Timothy fucking Chalamet is pretty rad. Let's fucking watch this. Uh, like, what? how do you know that that's not the movie like what the movie you're going into i don't understand in today's day and age you know like come on maybe that has a little bit to do with it kind of i know it didn't make a, a lot of money it's kind of like being considered as like a bomb so maybe that had something to do with it just people seeing it and not you know word of mouth saying don't fucking if you're not into you know horror or stuff like that don't go and see it well, I mean, okay, this guy Luca, who who made the film, is he did uh he did the the remake of Suspiria, yeah, which is very it's very good, but it's not for everyone. He did fucking mm-hmm. Call Me by Your Name, another movie that's not for everyone. So this is don't get me started on that movie. Uh, yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. I understand where you come from, <laughs> but um. My point bringing that up is that, like, just like A24 movies, nobody's expecting them to crunch numbers, you know? Yeah. Like, that's just not what they do. It's, uh, um, but I don't know. I didn't know that, that, that it's being considered a, a bomb. Yeah. No, it, 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 yeah. I was reading that, uh, reading an article, um, a couple of days ago saying that it was, but, um, I didn't expect it to be because he's in it. You know, Timothy, I know, has that draw, but, um, I don't even think yeah. the Northmen didn't even make money. I mean, see, but that like, and that's the fucking North. You know how many people are in that movie? <laughs> I okay. For, first off, I still need to see that, but I think that's kind of going a little bit like super a twenty four obscure. I know the cast is great, but like the style, yeah, the style and like what it's about. I, I can see why it didn't make as much as as, as it did. Um, yeah, that's crazy that A twenty four gave you know gave him that much money to <clears throat> to make that movie. But yeah, bones and all, definitely would say check it out. Are you going to watch it? Do you have any desire to? Are you? Yeah, no, that was one of the movies we wanted to see. It was either that between that the menu or or um, Violent Night. So definitely going to try and check it out before it, it, it leaves theaters. I know we might go again probably this weekend. Um, but yeah, no, that's on my radar. Definitely, and if I don't catch in the theaters, I'm definitely gonna try to see it on digital. And now for the movie focus of the week. Now, let's get it on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this week we're talking about Knives Out. It's PG-13. It's from 2019. It's a mystery thriller. It runs at two hours and ten minutes, and it's got a well-deserved, almost perfect 97 on Rotten people. Written and directed by Ryan Johnson, starring Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Anna Darmus, Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Shannon, Dan Johnson, Tony Collette, Lakeith Stanfield, Catherine Langford, uh, Jadine Mortel, Jaden Mortel, sorry, and Christopher Plummer. R.I.P. Uh, the film follows the events and investigation of a mysterious suicide within the household of the Thromby estate. Ryan Johnson first came up with his idea shortly after finishing the film Brick which itself is a modern noir style thriller and was set to begin work on knives out after finishing his time, on his time traveling thriller looper in 2012. But due to his involvement with the star Wars franchise, he opted to wait in 2017. The knives out script was written over a period of seven months. Production took place in different locations within Boston, Massachusetts over a few months at the end of 2018 and was released by Lionsgate in November of 2019. The film was met with an uh, incredible reception, being nominated for several awards and being recognized by the American Film Institute as, as one of the top films of its year. Knives Out ended up earning $312 million 
against its $40 million budget. Insane. Crazy. Everything about Knives Out is near perfect. The impeccable casting choices, set design, score, humor, and direction is nothing short of show-stopping. With Netflix having signed a deal with Johnson for two standalone sequels, one of which has already um, had its theatrical run, it's safe to say that this modern whodunit formula has audiences more than intrigued and will and we also love uh, we love us some Daniel Craig as Benoit Blanc. <laughs> five out of five fake knives. Make sure to catch this during the holiday season before uh, Glass Onion drops on Netflix uh, the week of Christmas. And in a world full of thrombies, I encourage you to be a Harlan. <laughs> Thank you. Bravo. So, man. Uh, what is your relationship with Knives Out? <clears throat> and uh, what do you think of it overall? Yeah, dude. So um, I saw this in the theaters opening weekend. And um, it did instantly became one of my favorites to come out in 2019. Um, I think this is uh, Ryan Johnson. He's, is, he's at his absolute best when he's doing stuff like this. Um, and um, I'm sure we'll get, go through it a little bit more through the um in the show, but um, the highlight of the film obviously is the cast. It, 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 everything and, and anything they bring to the that they um, they're just everything to the film. Uh, you know, the, the cast is, is the standout for me, and obviously um, his, his his great script is fucking like you said, damn near perfect. Um, but the ensemble cast, dude, probably one of the greatest of all time put together. Um, and then Daniel Craig's Benoit Blanc. I mean, <clears throat> it, he's so it's so perfectly executed by Daniel Craig that you literally cannot take your eyes off the screen when he's on it. Um, and um, yeah, dude, I just think it's the, the perfect movie to to put on during the holidays and uh, watch with a bunch of family and friends. Yeah, what about you? Uh. <clears throat> I believe I did see this in theaters too. I think they ended up bringing it back that year mm -hmm. later um, or extending. Maybe it was an extension of the theatrical run because it was doing so well everywhere. Uh, but I did catch it in the theater and I had so much fun. Um, you don't feel the runtime whatsoever. Like you said, the ensemble cast is insane. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> 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 and everybody is so good. And of course, the standout is um, uh, Daniel Craig and and Anna Darmus for me. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel is so goddamn perfect with his accent, and is so committed, and and you can just feel the fun that he's having, just chewing the scenery, dude. Every chance that he can get. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, like his fucking his crazy ass blue eyes, you know, is just yeah. I don't know. It's insane. Um, I've always been a fan of these kind of whodunit style films. You know, I think yeah. that's, a, that's a big reason why you and I love Scream, because it does kind of follow uh, loosely that, that kind of formula. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, dude, Knives Out. And the, and, the, and the fact that Netflix came to Ryan Johnson, and I think it was like $349 million deal. For the two no, se no. sequels? No, $469 million oh, okay. they gave him. Fact checker, fact checker. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to shortchange him. <laughs> <laughs> Insane amount of money, dude. I know, dude. And it, it, it was crazy. Is like I talked about it a couple of weeks ago because I saw I got the sea glass on in the theaters. It made like, like over $15 million in that one week it was in theaters. So I'm pretty sure this next one that comes out, Netflix is going to have to fucking give it a theatrical release to get that money. I would hope so. Um, they only did the week. So from what I remember, I think to be considered for awards, especially the Oscars, you have to run your film for a week. So I think that that's why they did a theatrical one so that they could mm -hmm. be eligible for, you know, uh, the, um, the golden globes and the Oscars and all of that. So it was smart on their part, but yeah, for the third one, I think, when they see that this taste for this stuff is still there, that it would be very um, wise for them to have just a longer theatrical run. 
basically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because even our boy, uh, our boy, our favorite <laughs> local projectionist, Chris Pollock, he wasn't able to see it because he said it, that they're only running it for a week and it doesn't fit into my schedule. If they had extended it, then I would have been able to see it. So he has to wait just like us. God damn it, Netflix. Chris wanted to see that movie. How dare you do this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But uh, I'm excited to see Glass Onion. You said you 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 liked it a lot, right? Yeah, dude, I liked it. I, I think that people are going to like it. Um, you know, they're going to love it because, you know, of, of, of Daniel Craig. It's obviously the cast isn't as big and it's not, um, you know, yeah, it's not as big. Um, but it's, it's a good watch, dude. And it's, it's, it's great. It does the same, it does its job and it does the same thing this does. It keeps you entertained for, um, an hour, 45, 50 minutes, two hours. It's, it's, it's great. <clears throat> so yeah, I think it comes out with the 23rd on Netflix. Yes. Which is, uh, uh I can't wait. Um, what yeah. do, what, I have some, a question for you. Would you, did you, do you think is glass onion better? No, I don't think it's better. Okay, it's good, dude. I I liked it a lot. It's 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 good. Um, but like like you you said in your opening, and then I just said this fucking cast for this first one is insane. Like, first off, Christopher fucking Plummer. Are you serious? <laughs> a legend, a legend, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and he's so good in those scenes with with Anna, like that's that that main scene where. They're playing the game, and then and she has the fumble with the, the medication. Like, it, he's so good in it. And then you just, just go down the fucking list. Daniel Craig, like, insane. It's so awesome. Like, I think it was so refreshing to see him do, be, you know, he is James Bond for, for everyone our age. And then to kind of twist, turn, take a 360 and do something like this is fucking great. Um, yeah, and then on his arm is fucking amazing in it like she always is jamie lee curtis the scenes that she's in she she's she rocks um i fucking love um what's his the, the not um lieutenant elliot not the keith but the other one his like love for benoit blanc oh yes yes <laughs> He's great. He, even he's gaining. He's like a minor character. Um, fucking Jaden Martell, like dude from It. Like you could kind of. He plays like a shithead, and you kind of. It's believable that he can be a little fucking Nazi troll, right wing piece of shit, <laughs> <laughs> just because how he is in the movie. And he's only in a couple scenes too. It's not that much. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then fucking Michael Shannon is fucking great in it. Dude, everyone, this cast, dude, and then. Chris Evans is the perfect asshole. Yeah, Ransom. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> Did you uh speaking of since you said you you felt Don't Worry Darling was kind of uh formulaic and and predictable. Did you see were you tipped off with anything that was happening in Knives Out as far as no. the story goes? No. No, no, dude. They got you. Yeah, they got me good. And and, and that goes for Glass Onion too. Glass Onion is, is the same thing. You, it, you'll you'll um you'll have a good time with it. And that's I think that's the what Ryan Johnson does so well is is even in fucking um what is it Brick right? Yes. Um, if you haven't seen that, go and fucking watch that. I don't know if it's streaming anywhere or anything, but I thought it was on. I thought it was on Max. I don't know if it Max? is still now, but it, it might be on Max. Um, We're already saying Max only. <laughs> <laughs> I dude, going back to that, I hope like it feels like, ah, uh, dude, they better not add like an X to it or something, dude. Like three X two, like can you imagine? <laughs> Max X X X. <laughs> now with adult t- content stream. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh man, yeah, dude. But um, and dude, Ryan Johnson, dude, it's crazy. He's only done, you know, what? How many? What is it? Four now? Kind of major motion pictures. I know Star Wars is is his biggest, obviously. Um, and this guy needs to to do more stuff. Well, and I go ahead. I feel like this is something that um, it could. I mean, I'm pretty sure that that 
that third one isn't going to be the last. Like this is something they could do for a while. <clears throat> yeah, because they're everybody's interchangeable. Crime is an, an like a timeless thing that's going to continue on. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and as long as they come up with fresh fresh ways to uh, throw us off the scent, so to mm-hmm. speak, um, I yeah I do I think that they could keep it keep it going and 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 have this like um ensemble cast interchangeable ensemble cast continue throughout for a variety of films you know Mm -hmm. i'm sure daniel craig loves um not having to be uh having this physicality to his Mm -hmm. role where he just kind of can relax and just fuck fuck around pretty much yes Uh, um but yeah also uh kind of going back to there's like a couple there's like two cameos in glass onion that are kind of super quick but you're like what the fuck and they're like like a-list celebrities you didn't know was in the movie do you know the big one uh that's in that's in uh knives out you're gonna stop me aren't you i'm pretty sure you don't otherwise you would have said it right away no i don't <laughs> so drop it on me so his boy uh the star of brick and looper that's right. Joseph Gordon Levitt is the uh, he is um the voice on the uh the that kind of podcast thing that um Anna's sister is listening to. Yeah. On the on the computer. So it's very subtle and and you can miss it, you know, anybody can miss it and I think that that's kind of the point, but um mm-hmm. it's that's a fun little thing that was put in there because of course JGL has a uh, a big relationship with um with Johnson. Yeah. <clears throat> so, g- going back to the movie, you said uh, you think that it's near perfect. When you say near, is there anything that uh, that you didn't like? Or... Let's rephrase it. No, I think it is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. It's 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 yeah. There's I I can like even I I just watched it maybe like an hour or two ago and I I. I don't know how many times I've seen it, seen it, but I, I was trying to find something that I didn't like, and I just could not find anything I didn't like. <clears throat> um, what about you? No, uh, th- there's um, there's some cringy stuff, but I think that it's again, it's not that I don't like it. Um, uh, I think it's meant to 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 make you angry, but when the family, when you're starting to um, p- pull back the layers, so to speak, for for the family members as you're seeing them mingle with each other after the mm-hmm. suic- the suic- the supposed well, it it was, it was a suicide, but the suicide happens and they're freaking out about what you know their future and everything, what's going to happen, and there's this really fucked up conversation between <clears throat> some of the family members in the living room. Uh, and they start talking about, uh, like immigrants in a very, um, distasteful way. And, Mm -hmm. uh, so for that, of course, I know why it's there to show you that, to show us as the audience that they're shitty people and how, how they think, how rich people think more, uh, specifically, but, um, that, that, uh, that bothered me, but I, again, I wouldn't take it out because I think it's supposed to invoke those kind of feelings. If you're a good person, at least. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely supposed to make you make it, you know, um, yeah, it's going to, it's supposed to make you feel like that. I think it, that family's a fucking dumpster fire. I could really relate to, to, to Harlan, his character. Uh, Cause he's kind of like, he's kind of like the Clint Eastwood and, and, and Gran Torino where, his family is shit. He knows it. And that's why he's grumpy. He has nothing in common. He doesn't really care for them. And then, you know, he fall, he, 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 he creates like his own family. Like he finds more in common with these people who are in his blood. And in the knives out, it's Ana de Armas's character. Uh, what's her, what's her character's name again? Martha. Uh, Martha. Martha. Yeah. And so I could really appreciate that. Um, aspect of the movie because that is that is me that is 100 <laughs> percent where i come from 
uh, <laughs> to not to not be mean um <laughs> but yes i completely completely understand why harlan did what he did and i think that he was 100 percent justified um did you did you read that how going back to daniel craig how he, for the the glass onion he had to have someone like help him re remember to how to do the 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 accent no yeah like he forgot how to do it he had to like <laughs> learn relearn how to do it and get someone to help him um to, to learn how to do it again <laughs> imagine his his accent's just different <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's funny that this this came out in 2019 because, uh, of course, I think everybody feels like this, but the, the, the pandemic era made everything kind of squashed together. So it feels like this just came out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it feels still very fresh, like a new film, and, 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 and it's already been out for a few years already. Yeah. Yeah, dude, 2019 was a fucking... So, dude, that's fucking Parasite, dude. Yes, it's a solid ass year for movies, and I think that if for he went up against against um against Parasite for, I think best screenplay. I think any other year, this wins, but that fucking Jesus Christ, that movie Parasite's insane. Who's uh who's your favorite character? My of everyone, my favorite, other than Daniel Craig. Yeah, <laughs> can't say Daniel. Craig. <laughs> that's a given. That's a given, right? <laughs> yeah. I really liked, um, I really liked, uh, R Ransom, Chris Evans, mm. uh, because, because specifically I feel like we, we look at him as Cap, uh, Captain America and he doesn't, yes. he doesn't really get a chance or at least, you know, maybe now, uh, but he, in, within that era of time, he wasn't really getting these kind of character actor roles so it was very refreshing to see him do something different and then when you figure out that he really he's pretty much the villain behind everything it's it's awesome and it works and he's so uh he's so good at uh playing like this like again like a more morally ambiguous character where you're not sure what his intentions are but he is pretty mm -hmm. charming and you do want to believe him because <laughs> he's chris evans and then you know when the shit hits the fan it's a it's he's so good <clears throat> yeah dude uh eat shit you eat shit you eat <laughs> shit <laughs> and you can eat shit <laughs> I guess originally, I don't know if you read this or not, or it came up in your research, but uh, he wanted to um, originally be like, uh, have have him say, uh, you, f you can fuck off and you can fuck off. Oh, you definitely fuck off. <laughs> uh, but he took out, this is a swan fact that I'm spoiling right now, but it's all good. Um, he took out a lot of the foul language because uh, he went back to as a kid that when he found like these, these, this style, these noir kind of style films and stories and stuff that he wanted other like younger people to be able to, to find it, to have it be oh, okay. more accessible. So that's why he, he was very adamant at having it be PG 13 because it was that's awesome. originally going to be a little bit more harsh, uh, I guess with the, with the language and such. Mm -hmm. What about you, man? Favorite character? I'd go, I'd go Chris, Chris Evans, but um, I fucking love Tony Collette and just the the role she's playing is just something kind of not what we're used to. She's kind of this like, in, she's an influencer, right? Yes. And she's like hard up for money, so she's being very, very fake and 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 trying to to fit in with the family the entire time. And you can obviously tell like that's. And she does. Uh, she feels kind of like not the smartest tool in the shed. Yeah, which is cool because you know, of course, fucking Tony Collette is a very like. She's she's played a variety of different kind of roles, you know, like mm -hmm. so to see her do like this kind of dumbed down version character was awesome to see because she's so convincing again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then just like a little little like something small. 
um, the the actress who plays Fran, uh, Eddie Patter- Edie Patterson. Yes. Um, for those of you who don't know, she's from fucking The Righteous Gemstones, which is fucking hilarious, and she's probably my favorite character in that 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 show. But even the scenes she's kind of in it are, are, are um, she does such a good job and, and, and is is hilarious. That was messed up. Uh, what 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 happens to her? She shows this like fucking huge ass spider on her face too. Yeah, <laughs> and just fucking crawling around. And that's when you <clears throat> that's when you know Marta's a good person, regardless of the outcome, because she could have let her die, and instead mm-hmm. she still resuscitates her and calls the police thinking that she's going to be you know she's going to be found out so yeah it speaks volumes for for her for her character <clears throat> the damn uh that that uh that hilarious uh car chase <laughs> oh, yeah. he's like floor it and she's like i am literally flooring it so yeah we should have got the took the beamer <laughs> <laughs> It's a great mixture of, of, of mystery. Like there's a seriousness to it, but, but it's also very playful where, mm-hmm. um, uh, there's a sense of fun, uh, to it. And I feel like what's magical about this film is that everybody seems to be on the same page with it. So the, 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 um, the overall tone never changes. It's, 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 um, it stays, um, very consistent throughout its runtime. Yes. And yes, Jamie Lee Curtis, although she doesn't have uh, like so much to do, she's very fun and hilarious, <laughs> especially when she freaks out when they, you know, the, the, the guy basically tells them like, yeah, your dad or uh, Harlan like left everything, everything, including the house to martha and then they immediately turn on her like a pack of rabid wolves <laughs> are, were you a you little bitch you, were you in on this the whole time <laughs> <laughs> i like that scene because the, he tells them um you know he's he's reading off the will and he says everything you know the 60 million dollars and then that's when they kind of turn on her and then he's not finished and it goes back and he pulls out that other paper and he's like <laughs> And the house. <laughs> Even the people that you think are, are, are the more decent people like Michael Shannon and, and, uh, was his daughter, I believe. The girl um, from 13. Uh, yeah. Uh, Meg, Meg. Yes. Like you think that they're, they have good intentions and stuff and they're still turn out to be selfish pricks because then Meg tells, uh, the family about, Martha's mom being uh, um, undocumented. Uh, they're from Paraguay, right? Yeah. Is what they say. Um, yeah. And so Michael Shannon's character ends up using that against her to try to get her to renounce the whole the shit. And it's like, dude, that's so immoral. That's so like literally threatening her at her door. It's wild. It's in it, another like little thing to show you how good of a per- person Marta is when she comes back and everything's about to unfold and we're going to, everyone's going to find out what happened. The, the, the daughter, uh, Meg, the, the grandchild of, of, um, of, of Harlan, she apologizes to her, uh, to, to Marta saying, you know, I'm sorry that I told them about your mom and all this and Ma- Martha tells her like it's okay, like I understand. Takes her apology and you know don't worry about it. It's okay. It's like Jesus, like that's how good of a person she is. Because I wouldn't have been able to. I would have probably slapped the shit out of her or something. Because it was almost like you think you- you're wondering is Martha just being facetious? Like is she just playing the role? Like and she doesn't really yeah. think that. <laughs> Because she's so forgiving, like without any question. <laughs> but but she was she was going to uh, towards the end of the film. She was going to admit that 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 it was because she was set up. Uh, the vials of medication were swapped, and then the the 
<clears throat> the antidote was taken from the bag, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Chris Evans, yeah. And <clears throat> so the entire movie she does think that she is at fault and that she really killed him and then Harlan covered it up by, you know, slitting his own throat. But it turns out that um Marta was such a good nurse that she knew despite the um the labels being swapped, she knew by the um the weight of the, of the uh of the bottles she she so she still because she had done it so much and she had muscle memory she didn't really look at them anymore and uh so she had really given him the correct dosage even though the 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 vials had been the um how do you say the uh the titles have been had been swapped out she still had mm. given him his correct uh harlan's correct um medicine so he really didn't have to uh to 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 kill himself the way that he did so it was still ruled a, a suicide but towards the end she didn't know that so she was going to admit her guilt admit admit what she did and renounce the inheritance to the family but because um they had the toxicology report and uh blanc reads it but she doesn't uh, marta doesn't then he knows he knows the truth yeah and so this incredible final act kind of unfolds shout out to uh martha's um weird condition where she can't lie or she fucking pukes everywhere <laughs> so that awesome. last one dude she just fucking pukes all over chris evans <laughs> <laughs> do you have any favorite what's your favorite scene uh i really really like the way that that um the the car chase is done because uh, you know martha's in thinks that she's in trouble and, and Blanc sees her off in the distance after somebody's burned down the, um, the, uh, what do you say? The, the, um, the DNA building mm -hmm. thing. And, uh, and he goes after her and the key Stanfield's character comes with, and then there's like this pursuit happens, but the entire time Blanc is like calling her on her cell phone and, and then he pulls up next to her and like you see him through the through Mart <laughs> dark Martha's window where he's all all confused like yo I'm calling you <laughs> but he's looking right at her I I always found that from the very first time that I saw it I, I found that so hilarious <laughs> <laughs> What about you man Um my favorite scene is that that scene at the very end where um Chris Evans knows that he's caught and so they're standing right there in front of the, it's like this throne made out of knives. Um, and, and, and Benoit Blanc is kind of explaining everything to, to how he did everything. And he knows it's up and he's fucked. So he, um, he, he grabs one of the knives off of, off of the, the throne. Right. And he kind of fall, they kind of falls towards her. And it's like slow motion. And you see the badass fucking, throwing a knife in the back and he goes to stab her and it's a fake knife like it's a it it, it you know one retracts. of those ones that kind of retracts yeah. yeah what's the what is what's that line he says before he he goes for the knife um but yeah that's my favorite just the way it's shot and how it's in slow motion and stuff that's my favorite fucking scene and he's like I, when he's on top of her with the knife he notices that it's retractable and he's like well shit <laughs> <laughs> Because he just he just uh, attempted murder in front of me, all of these witnesses. <laughs> so not only are you going to get the he's going to get murder charges for um, the oh, the no. help, right? Oh yeah, yes. And now he's going to get attempted murder charges on her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then Harlan's mom. Uh, they just call her um, Nana. I think they yeah they just call her Grand Nana. And then there's a, that great line where they're like, how old is she? And, and uh, Curtis is like, oh, nobody knows. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's supposed to be Harlan's mom, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's fucking, he's old. He's, doesn't he say he's 85 in the movie? Yeah, he's 85. So she's obviously would have to be, I don't know, 100. In the hundreds, yeah. yeah. But it, it's funny because that actress in real life is uh, somewhere in her eighties when, and then Christopher Plummer was 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 ninety, <laughs> so the <laughs> roles roles are reversed. 
Ransom, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really hope that it'd be cool to to kind of get like a you know kind of crossovers where maybe they bring um, you know some of the cast or like at least Anna Darmus into the next one or even um, um, what's her name. Jean Monet from the second one kind of to the third one because I I fucking both of them are great and they're kind of they he kind of uses them both the same kind of in the same way um but yeah they're fucking awesome and I hope they kind of he does something like that where some of the cast is shows up again somewhere I 100% back that and in fact um uh well I guess you wouldn't tell me anyway because it'd be spoilery. But I'm uh, uh, I'm shocked that they didn't do anything like that in Glass Onion. I mean, who knows? I did say there was a couple, couple uh, uh, cameos that you weren't expecting. So maybe, maybe not. I don't know. What? You gotta go, <laughs> gotta watch it on Netflix on December twenty third. Um, but yeah, I also heard a rumor. I don't know if you heard this rumor. Like when this one came out, that when the other two were announced, that he was gonna do two different like different accents every single movie, like the same character, but he was gonna be doing different accents. I did, re- yeah, I did hear about that. Uh, so I don't wonder what happened with that. So he doesn't. So he has the same kind of foghorn. Yeah, it's the same kind of you know very thick foghorn kind of southern accent, slurping on. Um, molasses or (laughs) (laughs) i know you you're famous (laughs) and i want to say glass onion i think you said this has 97 i think glass onion had is a 93 so it's still super high it so it has a 93 right now yeah glass onion has a 93 right now that's good to know nothing to be mad about i got some uh i got some swan facts for you Oh yeah, the people want to hear the swan facts. All right, dude. the people I mean me. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first up, the the mug closing shot wasn't planned, but more improv in that moment. Oh well, yeah. So you I s- love. Go ahead. I love that too. That the, the whole scene where they're kind of he's go, Chris Evans is going away, and you just the camera just starts zoom, zooming out, and you just see all of them. Yeah, looking up at her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you see that mug early in the film and then it makes its comeback but he he just wanted i guess uh like her to to like be having tea in that shot and then when when they were shooting it he i guess johnson like screamed up at her take a sip of the tea and then like the that m- m- uh, was it my house my rules my coffee yeah that came into the shot but it was never it was a happy accident like <laughs> awesome. it, it was that wasn't in the script for it to kind of read that way and but it it makes for a very powerful statement you know at the same time yeah yeah <clears throat> uh the portrait painting of harlan was not ready when filming began uh, do you remember that? Like the, the the oil paintings that they, they have? Yeah, he has like the big knife and like the book in his hand, right? Yes. So I guess that wasn't ready um, during filming. So that was just the, it, they had the, um, what do you say? The frame and then it was green screen inside. So then they, oh, okay. yeah, they, they, they green screened it uh, later in, in post in all the different shots in the film. And, um, and that's why. You see, you, you, you can tell, this is a very, very small detail, but um, throughout the movie, before the, the, the mystery is solved, he's kind of frowning. And then when the mystery is solved, the painting switches to, he's like smirking. Oh, shit, dude, I never noticed that. Yeah, you got to go back and check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Little hidden uh, Easter egg there. Knives Out was the first film to be shot digitally by Ryan Johnson. And he went on record saying that it was a lot easier shooting on film or the advantage of shooting on digital as opposed to film is mm-hmm. that you don't have to have so much intense lighting uh, mm. because film, you know, when you, it can look fine. And then when you go develop it, it ends, ends up looking like super dark. So you have to mm-hmm. overlight everything and it's a huge process, but shooting digitally, you can, 
um, kind of work with natural light and kind of balance off of that is what he said. That's crazy. That was pretty rad. And then in my last, my last fact for this evening, the, uh, the, the Thornby's, um, family were all named after famous seventies rock stars as a type of code to remember them all. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said that, uh, Johnson himself, he said that, uh, he, he created it as a kind of cheat sheet. So he wouldn't forget anybody because there is a shit ton of people and things happening in this. Yes. Uh, side note: um, Tell the people if you like if you liked his 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 Star Wars. I did. I, I, I there's a few things that I felt like didn't have to be in there, and it kind of took me back to to the traumatic uh, uh, that traumatic uh, the prequels stuff that reminded mm -hmm. me of the prequels and i don't if you know me you know that i'm not a fan of those movies whatsoever very hacky stuff but uh ryan johnson's um ryan johnson's film was good i didn't have any problem with it it was fine yeah no i i i i the whole trilogy in itself i have my my concerns and and things i didn't like about it there's a few, um, but the second one I, I liked because just like fucking, um, what's it called? Um, ends, Halloween ends. It's different. No one was expecting the what, what he did with it and what he did with, with Luke's character. And it was kind of like a little bit of a breath, breath of fresh air. <clears throat> um, also, if Disney and they had any fucking, like, they should have, if they didn't want anything changed or they wanted to go this, another route they should have just got abrams to do all three instead of giving him the second one and, and getting abram getting bringing abrams back to do the third one just didn't make any fucking sense yeah i completely agree with that i thought it was kind of weird it's like yo if you want a sustainable vision then why didn't you just have abrams do it all like exactly because there it's like a you can almost that second one is is uh, completely different than the other two. Yeah, he got his Disney Star Wars coin. That's all that matters. And now he has his Netflix coin. He really has had a solid kind of run, man. Brick was very good. It's very modest, but very, very, very good. And then um, Looper is amazing. Yes, I've always loved that movie. You know, um, and then <clears throat> did you know? Here's a bonus swan fact. Did you know that uh what's his name? What's the kid's name? Jaden Martell. Yeah, so you know how his character is like a fucking internet troll pretty much. Yeah. So that that character was loosely modeled off of all the haters um that 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 were harassing fucking uh Ryan Johnson for his work on Star That's Wars. Fucking awesome. I did <laughs> not know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucking good <laughs> you remember when somebody i think it might have been don johnson he's like yeah your fucking your kid was in the bathroom whacking off to a dead deer or something <laughs> <laughs> daniel craig goes back to that and says something like when he's telling his big He's, he's unveiling all his, his, his stories. Yeah, when the, the little Nazi was masturbating in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that little I saw that little fool in line at, on uh, Peter Pan's flight at Disneyland. Really? Yeah, dude. He caught me looking at it. I, I, was, I was staring at him because I thought it was him. And he caught me staring at him, but I was only staring at him because I wanted to make sure it was him. Did he look, seem freaked out or? No, he just like, look, I looked, I was like, it was one of those things where you kind of glance and like, he caught me glancing and then I looked again and he was staring right at me. <laughs> <laughs> but no one, no one knew it was him. You he didn't, like didn't go up? You should have went up? Nah, there. dude. He was with, his, he was with some girl. He was, um, yeah, we were waiting in line. He was like maybe five, six people behind us. But yeah, no one, you couldn't tell it was him. He was like wearing like a beanie and a hoodie. Uh, sit all knives out, dude. Um, go and fucking watch it if you one of the few people that haven't. And uh, watch fucking Glass Onion in a couple of weeks on Christmas, on Christmas weekend or Christmas week. 
yeah, they're a lot of fun. If you haven't seen it, um, go check it out. I don't think we've spoiled too much. Um, and there is so much going on that you probably won't even, you'll forget. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Even the, my watch, I don't know how many times I've watched this watch through. It was like, I could not keep my, keep my eyes off of the, the, the TV screen. I didn't want to miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> Be safe out there with all these Christmas crowds. That's right. Be nice. And be nice. <laughs> I want you to be nice until it's time to not be nice. <laughs> until next week, this is Ryan Jimenez and Wesley Swanson signing off, saying good fight and good night. It is an immovable fact that I killed Harlan. Yes, you did. Yes, he did. Yes, you are. But, but I spoke in the car about the hole at the center of this donut. And what you and Harlan did that fateful night seems at first glance to fill that hole perfectly. A donut hole in a donut's hole. But we must look a little closer. And when we do, we see the donut hole has a hole in its center. It is not a donut hole, but a smaller donut with its own hole. And our donut... It's not a hole at all. Mark, look, I understand that this is amusing for you. Why was I hard? Why would someone harm me? Someone fishing for a crime to reverse the will, Blanc. But I was hard before the sealed will was read. So, so yes, the person must have known the contents of the will. But one step further, that same person must have known a crime was committed. And further, if the intent was to reverse Marta's inheritance, they must have known that Marta was responsible. An intriguing combination of factors. Someone who knew what Marta did, wanted to expose it, but could not reveal how they knew. Fran! She was blackmailing me. She knew what I did. Yeah, but Fran wanted money. Ugo, she did not want the crime exposed. Well, there's someone in the family had observed Marta doing something suspicious. But they would have had no reason not to speak up. The answer is not so simple. Now, with the entire solution in my field of view, the arc of this case is a tragedy of errors. Amada, it will not be easy for you to hear. But there is at least one truly guilty party behind it all. Guilty in the true sense of acting with malice and committing a heinous crime with selfish intent. <laughs>